Welcome to I Believe. It's going to be a great broadcast today. I'm here with my good friend, Jeff. <laughs> We've been friends for 20 years, and I'm glad to be on your broadcast. Thank you for being here. Robert Slee Airden, I'm so glad you're here with me. So, these 20 years have been the best 20 years of your life. <laughs> you have a new book. You have This is your 89th book. Yep. It's been out a week. Yep. The Supernatural Language, Why You Should Speak in Tongues, you holy roller. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so You're not crazy if you speak in tongues. It's quite so normal. This, this one you signed to me. To Jeff, my very best friend in the whole world. There's no one as anointed as you. I am a writer. <laughs> no, he didn't say those things. But you did sign it to I me. Did, uh, thank you for you being ever my si friend. Do you ever sign it? To, like if someone comes to see you in a live service? Oh, I sign books all the time. You do? Yes. I love, When you quit... When people quit asking, there's a problem. So you want to, it's part of the author's fun to sign books. So you have 17 million books that have been sold. Yeah. Uh, you probably, your, your, your first one was a home run. You wrote it when you were 17 called I Saw Heaven. Yep. And then you, when you were 12, the Lord spoke to you. He said, write about my generals. Mm -hmm. And you've been writing about God's generals. Yep. You have six God's generals books. Yep. More that you're writing. You yeah. have children's God's Generals yes, books. Yes, I've got those. And then I've got what I call the God's Generals Resource, which are other books about or by those great people. So, And Whitaker House, is that your... Whitaker House is my publisher at the moment. Yeah, but they're a big deal because they, they're, they're, they're a lot of... There is a lot of publishing companies under their umbrella. Yeah, they, they, they're they good people. They've been good to me for all these years. Harrison House was my first publishing they company. They were spirit-filled. They were great. Right? At one time, every third charismatic book in the world was a Harrison House book. That's how great they were. And then Destiny Image. Destiny Image is another one. That's spirit-filled. Uh, yeah. yeah. Our, uh, Whitaker House, are they Pentecostal? Yep. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they're, they're full gospel. They might be a little light, but they're still full gospel. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Bob Whitaker, I'm playing... But no, uh, <laughs> Mr. Whitaker Sr. and then Jr. and the, they're all a, a spirit-filled family and, and business people. They're very good people. Very I, good to me. I, I remember uh, Oprah. She said she said something um, describing uh, a, a spiritual moment she had at an event she had called the Legends Ball and Sunday Go to Meeting Day or something that she had, and uh, Shirley Caesar was there oh. and. Wow. Yeah, B.B. Winans. And, and so oh, they're going to have good church. Yeah. So she, she talked about that, and she was so excited about it. She says, don't worry. Nobody spoke in tongues. So there, there is some shade thrown on tongue talkers. Yeah. Um, but for me, when that happens, yeah. it has become from marginalized to mainstream to where people like that know about it enough to make fun of it. So that's how far it's come, and it's not going to fade. It's going to keep pressing into that world. And most people who have faith in God know somebody that they admire, that they think there they're may be a spiritual giant or, or in tune spiritually mm -hmm. who speaks in tongues. So. Well, speaking in tongues is normal. If you don't, you're kind of weird. For the believer. For everybody. I think everybody should get saved and spirit-filled. And so I do my, too. My, my, my thing is speaking in tongues is normal because the Bible tells you to do it. Why did you write this book? To help you with that question right there. I wanted them to understand what tongues is and it's not, and how to receive it. What's the benefits? How does it grow? Can you understand what you say when you pray in tongues? And there are scriptures that tell us that we can interpret our prayer language, not just the tongue and interpretation in a public service, but privately. And then I wanted to go further. That into, is so true. It's yeah. some of the most powerful yeah. praying you can do. You pray in, in tongues for a few moments, then you pray in English for a few moments. Yeah. I learned that from Oral Roberts yeah, yeah. in an interview. Well, he, I grew up like that, but Brother Roberts told me. Because yeah. I asked, I said, Brother Roberts, how'd you build this universe? Because you know, I knew him, so I could ask all the fun questions. He goes, well, it was a cow pasture back in the days of the university. Because I would walk across the cow pasture and pray in tongues, and then allow the Holy Spirit to interpret what I prayed back to my mind, and I went and did it. And that's yes. how I built the university. That's what I, and that can happen yeah. to everybody. And I had prayed that way my whole life. And then I, when he described that you're interpreting your own tongue when you pray in tongues and then pray in English and yep. then pray in tongues, I thought, that's what I've been doing. That's how I pray. I didn't even know. Mm. It was, so it's good. It, it sets people free and yep. fuels their faith yep. when you show them something that their heart already knew. Yep. So the supernatural language, why you should speak 
in tongues. Do you think there's some sneaky Baptists who may who might speak in tongues? Oh, uh, there's some not. There's sneaky, more than a few. Yeah. Do you think? What there's about any famous them. ones like preachers? Well, I heard Stanley. I heard Charles that Stanley. I heard that speaks rumor. In tongues. Well, I know that Billy Graham's daughter. Forget which one speaks in tongues. And how do you know? Well, she said so. What? She said so. I heard it. Okay, so, you know. <laughs> you know Billy Graham believed in tongues. Yes! Some people said that he prayed in tongues. I do not know anybody that can say they heard him. I heard But I heard he him. had yep. a respect for it. I'll say it that way. I was listening. It was a 1972 broadcast. He has a Sirius XM radio station. Mm -hmm. And so I'll go back and forth between him and Joel. Uh, this is what I do in the in Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> But but Billy Graham was on there and he was preaching and it was from 1972. He said, now this charismatic renewal thing, I know some of you are really, you know, he's Southern Baptist. Yeah. I know some of you are really upset about it and some may, may, may be um, not like it. He says, but this is a move of God. He said, this is a move of God. Mm. He says, we don't need to reject it. We need to embrace it. I heard him say yeah. it out of my mouth. He was a receiver, a respecter. He and Or Roberts were good friends their whole life. And Or Roberts will get you saved, spirit-filled and speak in tongues, get you healed and delivered, and teach you how to give. Five things he'll do to you if you let him talk to you long enough. Billy Graham will get you saved every week. Or Roberts will give you five things. So that's a little bit of a... You can figure so that out. So I'm going to say names. I'm not trying to be rude, but that they were friends. And so Billy Graham respected the tongues part of life. If he received the baptism and spoke with tongues, if he had gone public, he would have caused a ruckus throughout his whole constituents, which I don't think would have been appropriate. So from history, from, from a Pentecostal historian, I'm going to say, I'm going to say a name. And I want you to tell me if they spoke in tongues. Just say yes, no, or I don't know. <laughs> if I know for sure. Okay. Say yes, no, or I don't know. You got to pick one of the three. Okay. okay? All right. Um, Jeff Ferguson game here, right? Oh, Jeff Ferguson speaks in tongues <laughs> like Speedy Gonzalez on crack. Okay. <laughs> on crack, okay. No, yeah. I speak in tongues. So every day of my life, every time I pray. Yeah. So, um, well, Paul said if you speak in tongues, you're praying directly to God. Yeah. You speak directly That's to God. That's one of the benefits. Yeah, yeah. So I've read this, so I know what the benefits are. Yes. So uh, Joyce Meyer. Yes. She speaks in tongues. Joel Osteen. Yes. Um, uh, Joseph Prince. Yes. Okay. Um, Kenneth Hagen. Uh, for sure. Kenneth Copeland. Yes. Gloria Copeland. Yes. Jerry Savelle. Yes. Paul and Jan Crouch. Yes. Marcus and Joni Lamb. Yes. Catherine Kuhlman. Yes. Oral Roberts. Yes. Um, T.L. Osborne. Yes. Daisy Osborne. Yes. Um, the people that had North America's largest revival in history, the Brownsville Revival, do they speak in tongues? Yes. Okay. Um, the other great big revival from Lakeland that came over from South Africa, do they speak in tongues? Yes. What about that great revival in, um, in Toronto, the Toronto Blessing, do they speak in tongues? Yes, they do. So the greatest revivals in North American history were all tongue-talking people. Had that as a part of what was going on. Yes. Okay, what about, um, what about the, the birth of the Pentecostal movement in North America? Did they, were, they spoke in tongues as yeah, part at, of it. At Azusa Street was the place where in modern times the Holy Spirit was restored with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Restored. Tell us about that. What happened? Well, when you read the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit first came in throughout many years of the book of Acts, the Bible says when they received the Holy Spirit, they spoke with tongues. It was one and, you know, the same kind of experience. So it kind of faded out after a while where there were still a few, but not a, ma a major movement or a major majority. And so by 1904, five and six, when God hit Azusa Street, his goal in that revival was to restore that aspect of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, with the gifts, all the graces that go with it. And so that's what happened. And all of us modern tongue talkers owe our thank you to a little black man named David Seymour, who was the pastor of the Azusa Street Mission. He was so blind? He was blind and left eye. His left, left eye. eye, yeah. Thank God for that right eye. <laughs> yes. He had a little beard. He kept a little beard because when he was young, he had smallpox scars. Oh. So he kept a beard on him. You can see all the little pictures of him. But 
you know, very good. Charles Finney, for example, for some of our Baptist folks out there. Uh, when you read Charles Finney's story, he does not say he spoke with tongues because that's the vocabulary from Azusa Street to today. Before that, he was the middle 1800s. If you read his journal, now I can't prove this for sure, but I'll give it as a, a possibility for you to consider. He would say things like, I, he was praying and unutterable gushings would come out of him. That's the that's and Holy he Ghost. Would, he would talk about moans and groans and an utterable gush at different times. And to me, as a spirit-filled, tongue-talking person, that language lends itself to what we use in our today. Yeah. I would assume that he, plus most of those others that have some type of experience with it, whether it was daily or you know season, I don't know, but they do mention it. What about some of the nominal leaders that of the more uh, reserved denominations, like, like uh, uh, you know, I ministered for um, Robert Schuller at the Crystal Cathedral, and he'd wow. have me come and do concerts, and he wouldn't let me use soundtracks. I had to, they, they would hire, um, like the last That's one I did. Dr. Schuller. <laughs> yeah, the last one I did, they had, uh, I did seven songs, and it kicked off their um, minister's conferences. He had mm. a great pastor's conference. Yep. And um, uh, what's the, West Angeles Church of God in Christ, who is that? Yep. Uh, that was, um, uh, what's his name? What's his name? I, I, know, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Famous, got great church. Uh, um, great church. What is his name? I can't remember his name. But he was there. And when I would go there, it seemed like Dr. Schuler's associate was always Assemblies of God. Mm. And and like uh, Preston Wood does a lot of my songs that I write. Um, uh, Preston Wood Baptist, mm. Jack Graham. Mm. And I've, they've done several of my songs on their albums. And... And they get Church of God people, like Pentecostal people, to be their worship directors, their worship leaders, their music arrangers. Mm -hmm. They love the Pentecostal music, and and they and they lift their hands now, and they 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 say a lot about the name of Jesus, kind of Pentecostal mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. you know, Bible stuff, Bible stuff. <laughs> okay, it's Bible stuff. And guys. Healing. Those <laughs> Baptists are getting healed yeah. left and right. Yeah. So there's a move of the Holy Spirit in areas that we would not think it'd be open. They're the charismatic movement was the Holy Spirit going into the historical churches and filling them and giving them the utterance of tongues. And that's still happening today. There's charismatic Catholics, Methodists, Lutherans, Brethren, Presbyterians. So all these groups have a percentage of folks who are more polite about it than you and I, because I'm more loud, bold, and pray in tongues right in the middle of my service. They probably wouldn't quite do it the same way, but they will have that as a part of their life. Before we talk more about tongues, I just kind of feel a little unction that's stirring out on the inside of me. And um, like I've been in service with you and you'll stand up and you'll say, um, everybody just just sing in tongues. Let's just sing in tongues. And the whole crowd will just start mm. singing in tongues. And it's a roar. It's awesome. Let's pray in tongues for, you know, pray in tongues. And it just immediately uh, ignites the atmosphere. Yeah. It's the quickest way to enter the spirit world. That's what Benny Hinn said. Yeah, spraying in, in tongues in, yeah. somehow gives you an entrance into that world faster, quicker, or whatever the right word is there. He said if it's tight in the atmosphere, he'll have everybody start speaking in tongues and it'll break it through. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, there is a move, and this is what I want to talk about, what I was not going to talk about, but I feel it stirring it on mm -hmm. the inside of me. There is a move going on right now. Um. Let me tell you a story. So, have you heard of uh, Oak Cliff Assemblies of God? Yes. In Dallas. Great church. Great church. At one time, it was just the, the one of it the biggest. It was the church. The church yeah. in the Assemblies of God. Yeah. But 60s, maybe? 60s, yeah. yeah. Well, that neighborhood got really bad and crime ridden. And like a lot of churches, they moved to the suburbs and they moved way south, almost to Waxahachie. Wow, that's a long way. Yeah. Place. Now it's called the Oaks. Have you seen it on I 35? Called oh, the Oaks. Who they are? That's that's oh, that's Oak okay. Cliff Assembly of God. I didn't know they yeah morphed into that. They, so they <laughs> went out there, and something happened in Dallas. I used to pastor in Dallas, you know. Yeah. Um, and something happened in Dallas, and uh, a lot of the Baptist churches or Church of Christ churches, even they would bring in instruments, mm. and and uh, sometimes even an Anglican kind of church, they would drop their denominational label. Uh, like Fellowship Church is the fourth largest church in America. It's Southern Baptist. It's Southern. They don't believe in women preachers. They don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit like we believe, you know, mm -hmm. um, Ed Young Jr. Yep, yep. 
but 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 they they do very contemporary music and so it draws spirit filled people they all lift their hands and and but it doesn't say southern baptist anymore there was such wild success in dallas with churches that did that that all of a sudden the assemblies of god churches and the church of god churches mm. the pentecostal holiness churches started removing charismatic pentecostal from their signs, from their yeah. um, brand. And all of a sudden they were just community church and, and they would no longer allow the moving of the Holy Spirit. Like we know, they, there would never be a message in tongues. You know, that's something that you did back in the corner, you know, like an uh, uncle you're embarrassed of, you know, you do it in the back <laughs> yeah. room. Um, and, and you could no longer tell the difference between the spirit-filled churches and the churches that were not. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oak Cliff Assembly was one of those, the Oaks. Just a few years ago, at the, at the Oaks, the Lord, they have about 8,000 people in attendance, a very contemporary, very exciting church, very Assemblies of God, but it's not on the sign. And the, the Lord spoke to the pastor on Saturday night, and he said, I need you to give me five minutes tomorrow morning. Wow. And the pastor said, God, you have all of every service. He said, son, I don't. I need five minutes tomorrow morning in the service. So it just stirred in him all night long. Ooh, wow. This is a true story. He gets up the next morning and he, they had praise and worship like normal. And he gets up and he says, the Lord spoke to me. He needs five minutes in this service. So I'm going to give him that five minutes. And he stepped back from the pulpit and looked down and just waited. You know, silence can be awkward in a church. Mm -hmm. And there was just, it just waited. Five minutes almost came up. And a little old lady, mm. way in the back, from way back at Oak Cliff <laughs> Assembly, stood up and gave a message in tongues. Wow. A little old timer over here, this fella from way back at Oak Cliff mm. Assembly, he stood up and he gave the interpretation. Mm. The ceiling opened up. The glory of God filled that room. Mm. Hundreds of people ran to the altar and a great revival wow. broke out. That's a great story. I didn't know that. Story. Yes. And so there is an entrance into a move of God mm. when we pray in the Holy Ghost, something happens. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. I believe prophetically that, that judgment is coming to the house of God and adjustment mm -hmm. is coming to the house of God. And I believe that churches like those Baptist churches or Methodist churches or Reformed churches that are, they are welcoming more of the Holy Spirit in mm. than they have in the past. God's going to continue yeah. to pour out his spirit and, and, and increase the moving of the spirit. But those of us, we Pentecostals, we charismatics who have uninvited the Holy Spirit, you uninvite him enough and he's going to get the message. Yeah, he'll leave. Huh? If you don't invite him, he will leave. He will leave. And we're, we are in our churches. We were talking about this at lunch today. And, and I, I said, Roberts, is it me? I, I, I'm worshiping and I'm giving it all I got. I can't feel nothing hmm. in church. I don't mean my church, but in, you know, we travel yeah. a lot. In church, I can't feel anything. He, you said, Jeff, it's not you. It's everywhere. Yeah. People don't There's know what the anointing right is. There's yeah. a drought and what they think the anointing is, is not the anointing. It's not the anointing. It is, it's a, some type of program or musical style. Or, or even something. sensuality. Yeah, sensuality. That resembles a, a, yeah. a wooing of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Because when the Spirit is in the room, you will know him. He well, does the same thing. There is, there is a, there's a response. Yes, there's something to it. You know? Yeah. Um, so we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. We did not even get to this book like we're going to. We're going to do a part two. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, can, how, how, how does somebody, we're going to talk about how you get the Holy ghost and speak in tongues okay. next time. And, but, but how can you pray for is, 
Can you just ask God for it and God will give you? Yeah, God will give it to you. God will give you. He will fill you with the Holy Spirit and he will give you the utterance or the sounds of tongues. You'll hear that you have to do the speaking yourself, but you'll hear that on the inside. However strange it sounds, just do it. And the more you flow with it, the better it will get and the more it will grow. In their living room or their car Anywhere. or their bedroom, can you pray for them right now and that could happen Amen. to them? Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're present everywhere. And where the people are desirous to receive you in a fullness with the evidence of speaking with tongues, fill them right now, we ask, right where they are. Let that power come over them. Let there be a peace and a joy that comes over them. And let that language of heaven begin to boil up inside of them. And we say, speak those words out in the name of Jesus. Be free and receive the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are not serving the Lord, let me lead you to him right now. Right where you are, say, Jesus, Jesus, I believe. I believe. You are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. You died for me. You died for you me. You rose again. You rose again. I confess this faith. I confess this with faith. With my mouth. With my mouth. Fill my body. Fill my body. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of this program today. You know, we have Bungalow Worship, our beautiful gathering right here at the Bungalow of worshipers, of band, singers. You turn bones into armies. We have The Vow, our dynamic ministry to 50 and over right here in Orlando. Tabitha's ministry, our victorious ministry for widows. Then we have Jeff Ferguson Ministries, which is our daily I Believe program every day at 1 p.m. on YouTube or Facebook, different social media platforms. Thank you for supporting this ministry. This is a healing place. This is a healing place.